In the deserts of New Mexico, scientists have been conducting groundbreaking energy and weapons research since the end of World War II. And in the shadow of the Sandia Mountains inside this U.S. government facility, that work continues. We're part of the National Nuclear Security Administration. We're doing work to ensure that we have a safe and reliable nuclear deterrent. But beyond that, Sandia National Labs also works to develop advanced technologies to ensure global peace, though that still involves some danger. There are radiation hazards in the building. When the machine fires, it creates radiation. Today, this facility is the world's most powerful and efficient laboratory radiation source, capable of creating conditions found nowhere else on Earth. There's a rumor that some of the folks filming the Avengers movie wanted to use Z as a portal and have something come out of it. This team of physicists, engineers, and technicians are in the final stages of careful preparation to fire the Z-Machine. So this is the Z-Machine. It's the nation's flagship pulse power facility. The whole point of the Z-Machine is to store energy and then compress it in time and space to achieve high energy densities. Essentially, this means the Z-Machine can replicate the cosmos right here on Earth allowing scientists to run a wide array of experiments, giving researchers the ability to study everything from plasma to x-rays to neutrons and nuclear fusion, expanding beyond weapons research to drive innovation in the fields of material science, renewable energy, and even helping redefine our very understanding of the universe. So how does the Z replicate the stars down in the desert? This entire facility, a third of a football field in diameter, as essentially one giant machine, engineered to store and then fire more than 20 megajoules of energy. The way we do that is the outer ring of the machine is a series of Marx capacitor banks. Uh, they store about 20 megajoules of energy. 20 megajoules is a fully loaded 18-wheeler barreling down the freeway at full speed. That's 20 megajoules of energy, but it's electrical energy stored in capacitors, charged up over a minute and a half, there's 36 separate modules that radially transport that energy into a target. All this energy from the Z-Machine flows into the very center. This is made possible by the technology beneath our feet. But we're standing above the oil section of Z. Inside this whole section is filled with oil. Right now it's drained out so we can take a look and we can see the Marx capacitors down there. These big silver boxes that store electrical energy as the machine prepares to fire. Roughly three hours out from the day's scheduled fire, 650,000 gallons of transformer oil fills the section, insulating the Z's generators and capacitors. 350,000 gallons of deionized water also fills the adjacent section, closer to the center of the machine. So deionized water has a very high dielectric constant, and it's good for filling the parallel plate transmission lines that then take the energy into the center of the machine. When the Z machine fires, energy from its Marx capacitors discharge and travels along transforming lines which pulse compress that energy as it makes its way to the center target. So we started out a minute and a half charging. By the time we're in this water section, we're shortening that pulse to 100 nanosecond rise time. That's 100 billionths of a second with the current from all 36 modules rising to 20, 25 megaamps. And now if you can imagine that 18 wheeler barreling down the freeway, hitting a dime and depositing its energy into a dime. And not only that, but it's dumped in on the time scale of a few nanoseconds. Or to put it another way, the Z machine fires more than 1,000 times the electricity of a lightning bolt, 20,000 times faster, hitting a target the size of a dime. This center circle is the Z machine's experiment chamber, currently being cleaned and prepped by technicians. This is where the immense energy fired by the massive machine ends up. Everything about this size in the middle is destroyed and turned either into debris and particulate or a little further into the middle, molten metal or very close to the middle into a, a hot plasma. That stuff goes splattering all over the walls of the machine. That's why it looks black in there. There's soot from the debris from disassembling targets in decades of previous experiments on Z. Using currents measuring roughly 26 million amps, Z compresses that energy in time and space generating X-ray emissions of 350 terawatts and producing incredibly high energy densities. We can produce temperatures hotter than the sun. You can create plasmas that are equivalent to plasmas around white dwarfs. You can create plasmas equivalent to plasmas in accretion disks of black holes. But creating the stuff of stars makes a really big bang. 
Aside from the high bay being a radiological hazard and there being hard x-rays that are emitted from the machine, there's a lot of stray voltage, stray energy. You would not want to stand here during a shot. The pulse-powered Z-Machine is able to convert roughly 15% of the electricity from its Marx capacitors to x-rays at its center. The energy that we're putting finally into the center is equivalent to a couple sticks of TNT. That's all packed into sort of like a cubic centimeter sort of volume. As far as energy conversion, this is fairly efficient. But when you're dealing with more than 20 megajoules of energy... We get a couple sticks of TNT in the middle, but we started out with a fully loaded 18-wheeler. What happens to the rest of it? That's where we get the arcs and sparks, the discharges across the top of the machine. We get shock in the water section. There's actually plasma channels formed in the water switches when they self-break and transfer the power down line. The plasma channels form it's like little mini lightning bolts between two conductors in the water section. And just like you have thunder from a lightning bolt, you have water shock that reverberates through the machine. Attention building 93, Z is preparing to fire. Every time the Z machine fires, it generates a shock wave that can be felt throughout the building. My office, for example, is, I don't know, probably 300 yards away. On the second floor, I can feel the building shake every time Z shoots. It's even been said that if you're looking at the right place at the right time, you can actually see dirt rise from the desert as the shock wave goes out. We like to aim for 150 shots a year. We don't operate 24-7. We have sort of a defined window. We typically shoot late in the day. After each fire, the team will clear the debris, remove all the instruments at the center, clean and refurbish those instruments, and then reassemble the Z-Machine. Then there's a few more hours in terms of installing the target, diagnostic alignments. With the target now in place and the diagnostics instruments installed, the high bay is cleared of all personnel as they enter the final stages of firing a shot. Z's pump system is engaged to create a vacuum in the experiment chamber. But an hour into the process, it's clear something's wrong. There's a leak somewhere, and they're unable to reach the final vacuum state inside the experiment chamber. If the team is unable to find and seal the leak, the day shot, planned several months in advance, can't happen. As these technicians scramble to locate the leak, the two astrophysicists from the University of Texas grow concerned. They know this complication could jeopardize their research on white dwarf stars that they've spent years working on. On our next focal point, will the team at Sandia successfully fire the Z-Machine and recreate the conditions of a white dwarf star?